Madam Chair, when I have an amendment at the desk. Okay, the clerk uh, will report the amendment. And Madam Chair, I reserve a point of order. This is Hank Johnson. Okay, point of order reserved. The clerk will report the amendment. Amendments to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to the committee print offered by Mr. Laterna of Kansas. Without objection, the reading of the amendment is dispensed with. The gentle uh, man is recognized to explain his amendment. Madam Chairwoman, I know that we have all watched the catastrophe in Afghanistan unfolding over the past several weeks with a mix of sadness, anger, and embarrassment. The truth of the matter is that President Biden promised to get each and every American out of Afghanistan. He failed to do so. And there are currently hundreds of Americans trapped behind enemy lines and left to fear for their lives. President Biden and his administration never had a full accounting of how many American citizens were in Afghanistan. They never had a full accounting of how many requested to be evacuated. And they still don't have a full accounting of how many Americans remain in Afghanistan. President Biden had five months, five months to prepare for the eventual fall of Kabul, but for some inexplicable reason, chose to wait to start evacuating Americans until days before the Taliban took over. Not only that, but the administration reportedly gave the Taliban a kill list of Americans stranded in the country and put them in even more harm's way. However, the number of Americans left in Afghanistan is a simple question that President Biden has been unable to answer. Just recently, we learned that as many as two dozen school children from California were part of the hundreds of American citizens left behind to die in Afghanistan. Ensuring that no American is left behind should be our top priority and sole focus in the current crisis. But to this date, no one in the Biden administration seems to really know or is able or is willing to tell us how many Americans have been left to fend for themselves. This amendment would address this need by requiring GAO to produce a full account of American citizens in Afghanistan prior to April 14th, 2021, the date President Biden announced US and US allied forces would fully withdraw from Afghanistan. How many Americans were evacuated and how many remain post withdrawal? It should be readily apparent that in Taliban controlled Afghanistan, any American is in jeopardy of being assaulted or killed every single moment they are left there. Despite that fact, President Biden has abandoned hundreds of our fellow citizens. This is a dereliction of duty and an embarrassment. The Biden administration's total lack of planning and complete mismanagement throughout the withdrawal process has not only resulted in the unnecessary and unavoidable, completely avoidable, deaths of 13 brave United States service members, it has resulted in a likely American hostage crisis in Afghanistan. And it has sent a clear message to American citizens and allies across the world. It is no longer a guarantee that this administration will do whatever is required protect, to protect you and stand with you in your moment of crisis. You are on your own. However, it is not too late to save the lives of those who have been left behind. But to start, we need to know how many Americans have been left in harm's way, and we need to know now. I urge my colleagues to support this common sense amendment, and I yield back. Hi, uh, would, would uh, anybody else seek recognition? Madam Chair, uh... I would request, this is Hank Johnson, I would request a ruling by the chair on my point of order, which is that this is a motion that is non-germane. Well, I would first like to respond and also uh, a ranking member Comer and a member Raskin have also sought recognition. I suggest we listen to their comments and then uh, make a ruling on your, your, your motion. So Thank Mr. You. Comer. Thank you, Madam Chair. I support this amendment. President Biden upheld his promise to the Taliban, but failed on his promise to Americans by abandoning them. 
Uh, he's left Americans stranded in Afghanistan. And just a few days ago, the Secretary of State was on television guessing the number of Americans hoping to leave the country. It, it's an embarrassment. We must have a full accounting of those Americans stranded by the Biden administration to ensure all Americans that want to leave Afghanistan are able to do so. GAO is well positioned to work with the State, State Department to get this information, and I recommend uh, we simply change the purpose of the fund. So I urge all of my colleagues to vote yes on the Letourneur Amendment, and I yield back. Okay, um, Mr. Raskin, you are now recognized. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, represented, I move to strike the last word. Representative Johnson, of course, is right that this is in a parliamentary sense, not germane, and it should be rejected for that reason. But this whole new line of attack on Afghanistan is an irrelevant and embarrassing distraction from what we're trying to do today. And it's embarrassing because um, you can read an article on page A12 of the New York Times today whose title is GOP as sales pullout, it had supported under Trump. And several members of this committee figure prominently in this article, but it talks about how numerous Republicans, including former President Trump himself, who were attacking Biden for not getting out of Afghanistan earlier um, and for not fulfilling the agreement that Secretary Pompeo had made with the Taliban more quickly are now turning around completely and blaming Biden for fulfilling the promises that Donald Trump and Pompeo made in the agreement with the Taliban, which I concede to you, Congresswoman Cheney called a surrender agreement that was negotiated by the Trump administration. So there were Republicans who attacked it, but I don't think any of them were on this committee because they were cheering the policy of getting out as quickly as possible. In fact, President Biden was attacked by Mr. Biggs for postponing the departure date from May 1st to August 31st. And that figures in this article as well. He said, that kind of thinking has kept us in Afghanistan for nearly 20 years. Representative Biggs of Arizona complained at the time. So the members who are attacking President Biden for not getting out faster, for not getting out earlier, and for not completing the agreement that President Trump had negotiated, which again, I concede was called a, uh, a, a surrender agreement by Representative Cheney, now, are now attacking President Biden for precisely fulfilling best that he could the agreement that was negotiated by Donald Trump. So I just find that, I, you know, astounding. And when Representative Big says that he's profoundly befuddled, I think he's befuddled because he's changed his position by 180 degrees. I think the people who were supporting an immediate pullout quickly, just get out America first, are now saying somehow that President Biden did not faithfully execute the Trump agreement that was negotiated, of course, before President Biden came into office, which he did. So um, I think everybody should check out this article. You will find a number of members of this committee in it. And I understand the partisan um, inclination and impulse just to attack whatever happens uh, in the current administration if it's not your guy in office. But my God, at least have a decent interval of time before you completely change your position because it looks embarrassing to all of us to turn around uh, in that way. Now, there's a lot to criticize in the debacle of our exit from Afghanistan. But President Biden gave us an extra three months and he was able to get thousands and thousands of people out. So rather than railing against that and trying to improve upon the completely flawed agreement that he inherited from his predecessor, um, we should be focused on trying to get everybody out who needs to be out, including the allies of the United States. And then we do need to conduct serious oversight into the Afghan war, not just the last several days of the war, but the 20 years of the war. And uh, it, it seems to me that that's something that should elicit lots of bipartisan consensus and agreement, but just the, the, the impulse to turn everything into a partisan club is just so depressing, Madam Chair. There's a lot to criticize. 
in what we just saw under the Biden administration and a lot to criticize what we saw under the Trump administration. And so I, I just don't think we should be running around and pretending as if uh, there was that much of a difference between what the last administration negotiated and what this administration executed upon. And if we're going to be having imperial wars all over the world, we're going to be dealing with a lot of exit strategy issues. And we saw that in the Vietnam War. We saw that in the Iraq War. We saw that in the Afghan War. So, you know, we could have a grown up serious conversation about it if people can rise above the temptation just to denounce the other party for what all of us are responsible for as Americans. And I yield back to you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, Madam one Chair point of order. Like point of order. Gentleman is recognized for his point of order. Madam Chair, I, I don't think uh, our friend Mr. Raskins is, is fooling anyone with uh, trying to muddy the water chair. No Republican on this committee is criticizing the fact that the, the desire to withdraw our troops. We're criticizing the, the plan or lack of plan that Joe Biden had in withdrawing. Uh, I don't think anyone in America believes that if Donald Trump were president, that any of those weapons would have gotten into the hands of the Taliban. He would have sent airstrikes in if he had to, to destroy the weapons from getting in the hands of terrorist groups and our adversaries. And I think that if President Trump had been president or Bush or even Obama, that if you had a withdrawal that was botched as badly as it was, somebody would be held accountable. And we agree, Mr. Raskin, we want to uh, get serious and we're trying to offer serious amendments to get an accounting of who all's left behind, how many weapons were left behind. And this is offering money that you all are wanting to waste on silly things to actually fund the exactly. evacuation amazing. of American citizens in Afghanistan. And that's my point of order, Madam Chair. I yield back. Just wanted to correct <laughs> Mr. Raskin's misstatements. Can I respond, Madam Chairwoman? Uh, Mr. Mr. Lynch. Mr. Lynch is now recognized. Can't hear Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, let me just, first of all, I, I do agree that with uh, Mr. Johnson's uh, uh, motion that this is not, not germane to this bill and, and this markup. Uh, uh, I, I, I would remind my colleagues that, uh, that the president has already directed a full accounting. Uh, number one, under the Trump administration, the Obama administration, the Bush administration, it was never necessary for someone entering Afghanistan to register. Uh, it was encouraged, but it was never never required. I, I know me multiple members of, of Congress who have flown in without, without registering uh, their, their presence in Afghanistan. And, and thousands of Americans have done that. And so that, that really, uh, you know, adds, adds to the problem. It has never been a requirement. <clears throat> and if the gentleman wants to make that a, a requirement that we track the, the location of every American, then he, he is welcome to do so. However, uh, we've asked uh, for a hearing uh, in early September to, to look at these very issues on, on the Subcommittee on National Security. The, the chairwoman has uh, been been very vocal and, and eager to bring that up to full committee uh, level, and, and I'm happy to participate in that forum as well. Uh, we have, look, we've had dozens of, of hearings on Afghanistan between hearings, meetings directly with uh, Ash, Ashraf Ghani uh, and his administration. Uh, so we, we were asking all these questions during this process. Uh, and, and I don't think the answer lies with GAO, uh, the General Accounting Office. I, I, I do think it would be faster, and the gentleman wants a, a faster uh, uh, resolution to this and a quicker answer, but uh, I would rely more on uh, the task force that the president has set up to determine what those, uh, you know, what those numbers are in terms of people who remain in Afghanistan. Thank you. I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Who else, uh, who else seeks recognition? Madam Chairwoman. Mr. Biggs, you are now recognized. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, 
I, I, I'm, I'm responding because I was called out by name by Mr. Rask, and I think I get the opportunity to respond. The fact that he wants to uh, to uh, say, well, maybe we should be more bipartisan, we shouldn't be partisan in this thing is absolutely incredible and laughable from a guy who pursued the Russian hoax and led the botched second impeachment effort, all because of a partisan witch hunt. That's that's who's who's being critical about this. Now, let me just talk about the distinction between the, the Biden exit and the Trump planned exit from Afghanistan, which I supported. And I did support leaving Afghanistan. And as, as co-founder of the, the bi, truly bipartisan War Powers Conference, I, I supported that. But here's the deal. There was a plan in place under President Trump. Uh, there were agreements that were made that were violated under the Biden regime. The first was that the t- Taliban was supposed to conduct negotiations with Afghan government for establishing a, co- uh, a power sharing peaceful uh, government. That didn't happen while under Biden's watch. It was happening under the Trump watch, which is why you didn't see attacks on U.S. soldiers uh, and military in the last uh, uh, 18 months or so. The second part of the agreement was that there would be a ceasefire to allow those negotiations to take place. That was part of the deal that President Trump negotiated. That was violated. That was violated by uh, the, the Taliban under the the Biden administration, and there were no consequences. The distinction between the two is that the Trump administration administered severe and harsh consequences whenever the Taliban breached agreement. And when that happened, there was immediate communication to them as to why uh, they they had received uh, overwhelming force in in a, a retributive manner from our side because they had violated the agreement. The distinction is President Trump had committed to bring home all material, all the sticks, all the armaments, everything, and not to abandon Bagram until An all amendment that Americans- is We are spending hours. Madam Chair, I'm sorry, someone's, someone's talking. I, they're interrupting me. Um, I'd ask for my time back. Members, please uh, mute. If not speaking, please mute, members. Thank you, Madam Chair. So I would also add this. We were, he was going to bring out all the material. He was going to bring home all American citizens uh, who, who wanted to leave ahead of time. And then you, he was going to withdraw the military. The Biden administration did not do that. They did not have a plan. It was not even organized chaos. And that's why we have material going all over to our enemies in the Mideast, as, uh, in particularly to terrorist organizations, as well as the loss of, of Americans who are still over there, who wanted to come home. There's the distinction. You, I supported, I do support getting out of endless wars, particularly in Afghanistan, but you can do it in a, in a ordered conditional basis, the way the Trump ad, uh, administration was trying to do, or you can botch it up and blow it up the way the Biden uh, regime did. And to sit here and not have, you don't have to be subtle, you don't have to be nuanced and understand the distinction between a plan and agreements made and violation and consequences that were administered by our administration when it was Donald Trump. And then to sit here and say that, uh, that this is, that when you're the guy who led the impeachment efforts over partisan issues to say, well, we just really shouldn't be partisan here. That's laughable, it's incredible, and I yield back. Back. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from Kansas uh, has his hand up. You are recognized, Mr. LaTurner, for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. I want to remind everyone what this amendment is. It's spending $25 million so we know what Americans were in Afghanistan before April 14th, who requested to get out, and how many are left there now. Representative Raskin is doing his level best to put lipstick on a pig. He used the the terms embarrassment, depressing. What is embarrassing and depressing is having a hearing, the oversight committee having a hearing on electric cars when we have hundreds of Americans stranded in Afghanistan. He repeatedly used the term partisan. What is partisan is the inability to hold the administration accountable when we left materials, weapons, when 13 service members have been killed, when Americans are still left there, 
and we can't talk about it. I, I understand uh, the, the point of order and you all have this greased so you don't have to take a tough vote, uh, but this amendment is common sense. It makes complete sense. It isn't partisan. This is common sense and the vast majority of Americans support it. And, uh, and Representative Raskin's comments uh, are, are absolutely absurd. This is something that we should be talking about. This, uh, the attempts to blame the previous administration for the execution, not just the planning, the execution of this plan uh, is, I urge my colleagues to support this amendment. Uh, I, I recognize myself for five minutes. We are all deeply, deeply concerned for the safety of Americans who were in Afghanistan over the past several weeks, and especially those that remain. All of our offices are working with our allies, with American citizens, with the State Department, uh, trying to get them out. That's why, as I mentioned earlier, our committee held a bipartisan briefing this week to hear directly from the special Inspector General for Afghanistan Reconstruction. And we are calling for and arranging a classified briefing on just this subject, how many remain, where the paperwork, how it's working, how we're moving the, the supplies, everything else uh, for the week that we return. The evacuation mission conducted by the Biden administration successfully resulted in the evacuation and relocation of more than a 123,000 American citizens, special immigrant, immigrant visa applicants, third country nationals, and other at-risk Afghans. Uh, we are working to get a classified brief briefing from third country nationals, what their process is, how many of our citizens are there, how can we bring them home? The Biden administration will use the diplomatic might of the State Department uh, to ensure the safe evacuation of any remaining American citizens and our Afghan allies who are seeking to leave Afghanistan. As Secretary of State uh, Blinken and President Biden made clear earlier this week, there is no deadline, no deadline for evacuating American citizens and our allies. Our committee remains laser focused on helping the Biden administration to ensure that US citizens and our Afghan allies and other vulnerable populations, we're hearing women leaders are particularly at risk, can continue to evacuate safely now uh, that our military and diplomatic personnel have departed uh, Afghanistan. However, eliminating all funding for oversight of the reconciliation package would deny the American people the accountability and transparency that they deserve. We are committed to conducting strong oversight of all government operations and which is why I cannot in good conscience support an amendment uh, like the one before us. I urge my colleagues to oppose the amendment. I, I yield uh, back. And I wanna note that the gentleman has made a point of order that the proposed amendment is not germane and the chair is prepared to rule. Uh, Madam Chair, I have, my hand, I have my hand up, Madam Chair. Okay, all right. Mr. Okay, Mr. Gibbs, uh, you are now recognized before uh, we will thank move you. on. You know, okay. I wasn't going to speak, but uh, uh, some of the comments from Mr. Raskin and Mr. Connolly are very up upsetting to me. And I want to uh, talk a little bit about what uh, Representative Biggs talked about, because I'm going to be concurrent with him uh, about the Taliban violating the agreement, uh, the Trump uh, agreement with the Taliban we're trying to negotiate with conditions based, as he said, and I will restate all that. But I think one thing we, as an oversight committee, we should be concerned about. We have all these refugees. As you said, uh, uh, the Biden administration brought over 120, rescued 124,000 people. And they reported about 5,000 or so were American citizens. So that leaves well over 100,000 that are not American citizens. And reports coming out uh, of late that a lot of them do not have documentation or identification. And that's upsetting, uh, concerning to me because as we know, the Taliban put a perimeter around the airport and they controlled who came into the airport and who didn't. And so there's a, a strong possibility that a lot of those people are a lot of good people, I'm sure, but there could have been uh, uh, you know, other people that with bad intentions uh, were also brought in and, and we've treated them over there. So somehow we gotta make sure that we're not creating a haven for terrorists in this country. 
by all the undocumented people that come over without identification, how are we going to vet them? And that's what we should be having hearings about and figuring that out, because I think our country's at risk now uh, of, uh, of uh, thousands of people that could be coming over here that don't want to do harm to our country. And uh, we need to address that. And, uh, and I want to make clear that the Trump administration would not have pulled out every soldier in that on, when, the, when the conditions have been violated. And we were down to 2,500 troops and no casualties and no deaths in over, well over a year and a half. And uh, so this nonsense about that uh, the Trump administration caused all this and, and created that and Biden administration was just moving on that is, is a bunch of nonsense. It's not true. And uh, it, there was, <laughs> President Biden put out the, the August 31st deadline with no conditions and he essentially surrendered to the Taliban and they moved in. And the Biden administration failed to act when the Taliban was in July and August was seizing uh, fast areas of Afghanistan and failed to act and failed to t uh, give our the Afghan uh, uh, security forces uh, air cover. And so they really were really uh, outnumbered and, and the morale just fell apart. And so what's happened in Afghanistan and the debacle of this pullout falls on President Biden and his senior leadership. And we should be calling for the resignation of our Secretary of State and our Secretary of Defense and uh, move from there and address this issue about how are we going to vet the, all these people that are bringing over this country that we don't even know who they are. So that's why I want to lay that out and make that clear, that President Trump was on conditions-based agreement, and when they violated the conditions, we would not have pulled out another single troop, and we would have kept air cover there probably indefinitely. So I yield back. Um, the gentleman yields back. As I said, there are classified uh, meetings set up on these issues for the week that we return, not only by our committee, but also the Foreign Relations Committee and other committees. Uh, we now turn to the point of order that was proposed. The gentleman from Georgia uh, made a point of order that the amendment proposed by the member is not germane. Clause seven of rule 16, the germaneness rule provides that no proposition on a subject different from that under consideration shall be admitted under color of amendment. Here, this amendment is not germane because it addresses a subject matter, Afghanistan, that is different from one under consideration in this particular bill before us today. Therefore, the amendment offered by the gentleman fails the test of germaneness and the point of order is sustained. I appeal the rule of the chair. The, uh, I the move to table. I move to table the uh, appeal, Madam Chair, Hank Johnson. The motion to table is not debatable. The question is, shall the committee table the gentleman's appeal? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. 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 I request aye. the and nays. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the motion to table is agreed to. The gentleman's motion is not in order. I request the yeas and nays. A requested and recorded vote has been requested. A recorded vote is ordered. The clerk will call the roll. Clerk will call the roll. What's happening? Ms. Norton? Congresswoman Norton votes aye. Ms. Norton votes aye. Mr. Lynch? Mr. Lynch votes aye. Mr. Lynch votes aye. Mr. Cooper? Cooper votes aye. Mr. Cooper votes aye. Mr. Connolly? Aye. Mr. Connolly votes aye. Mr. Krishnamurthy? Aye. Mr. Krishnamurthy votes aye. Mr. Raskin? Aye. Mr. Raskin votes aye. Mr. Khanna? Homer votes no. Mr. Mfume? Mr. Mfume votes aye. Mr. Mfume votes aye. Ms. Acacia Cortez? Ocasio Cortez votes aye. Ms. Ocasio Cortez votes aye. Ms. Tlaib? Tlaib votes yes. Ms. Tlaib votes aye. 
Ms. Porter? Yes. Ms. Porter votes aye. Ms. Bush? Bush votes aye. Ms. Bush votes aye. Mr. Davis? Davis votes aye. Mr. Davis votes aye. Ms. Wasserman Schultz? Wasserman Schultz votes aye. Ms. Wasserman Schultz votes aye. Mr. Welch? Welch votes aye. Mr. Welch votes aye. Mr. Johnson? Johnson Abuja votes aye. Mr. Johnson votes aye. Mr. Sarbanes? Sarbanes votes aye. Mr. Sarbanes votes aye. Ms. Spear? Ms. Kelly? Kelly votes aye. <clears throat> Ms. Kelly votes aye. Ms. Lawrence? Lawrence votes aye. Ms. Lawrence votes aye. Mr. Desanye? Desanye votes aye. Mr. Desanye votes aye. Mr. Gomez? Gomez votes aye. Mr. Gomez votes aye. Ms. Presley? Presley votes aye. Ms. Presley votes aye. Mr. Quigley? Quigley votes aye. Mr. Quigley votes aye. Mr. Comer? Comer votes no. Mr. Comer votes no. Mr. Jordan? Mr. Mr. Gosar? No. Mr. Gosar votes no. Ms. Fox? That we can use that to have Ms. bills no. to be able to produce those draw. Ms. Fox votes no. Mr. Heiss? No. Oh. Mr. Heiss votes no. Mr. Grothman? Sorry, no. Did you hear that? Yes. Mr. Grossman votes no. Mr. Cloud? No. Mr. Cloud votes no. Mr. Gibbs? No. Mr. Gibbs votes no. Mr. Higgins? No. Mr. Higgins votes no. Mr. Norman? Mr. Sessions? Sessions, no. Mr. Sessions votes no. Mr. Keller? No. Mr. Keller votes no. Mr. Biggs? No. Mr. Biggs votes no. Mr. Clyde? No. Mr. Clyde votes no. Ms. Mace? Mace, no. Ms. Mace votes no. Mr. Franklin? No. Mr. Franklin votes no. Mr. Letourner? No. Mr. Letourner votes no. Mr. Fallon? No. Mr. Fallon votes no. Ms. Harrell? Ms. Harrell votes no. Ms. Harrell votes no. Mr. Donalds? No. Mr. Donalds votes no. Ms. Maloney? Maloney votes aye. Ms. Maloney votes aye. Is there any member who has not voted? Madam Chair, how was I recorded? Mr. Khanna is not recorded. Uh, Khanna votes aye. Mr. Khanna votes aye. Is there any member wishing to change his or her vote? The clerk will report the tally. On this vote, we have um, 24. I'm there, how am I recorded? This is Wasserman Schultz. Ms. Wasserman Schultz, you are recorded as aye. Yes. Wasserman Schultz still votes aye. <laughs> The okay. clerk will report the tally. On this vote, we have 24 ayes and 18 noes. The motion is tabled and Mr. Clyde is now recognized. Mr. Clyde, you are now recognized. And Thank Madam you, Madam Chair, Chair, I would reserve a, a point of order. This is uh, Hank Johnson. 
Mr. Johnson, 